Grace and peace. Welcome to the CCC Staff Devotionals. As you with, with me, uh, we'll be continuing in our reflections on Psalm 119, and today we'll be looking at the 15th stanza of this epic acrostic psalm, stanza Samic, verses 113 to 120. Let's read it so we can see what the Lord can teach us this morning. Psalm 119, verse 113 to 120. This is the word of God. I hate the double-minded, but I love your law. You are my hiding place and my shield. I hope in your word. Depart from me, you evildoers, that I may keep the commandments of my God. Uphold me according to your promise that I may live, and let me not be put to shame in my hope. Hold me up that I may be safe, and have regard for your statutes continually. You spurn all who go astray from your statutes, for their cunning is vain. All the wicked of the earth you discard like dross, Therefore, I love your testimonies. My flesh trembles for fear of you, and I am afraid of your judgments. Thus says the Lord. Now, if we remember what we talked about a couple of weeks ago in stanza none of this psalm, the previous stanza, we saw the psalmist reflect on how God's word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our paths. Right? It illuminates the paths in front of us and guides us the way away from the snares of the enemy and into the paths of life. Therefore, the psalmist commits himself to stay on this path. And in this stanza, we see that the psalmist tells us what this commitment to stay on God's path, God's word, entails. And we can see in verse 113 that uh, he begins by saying that because he's committed to God's word, he hates the double-minded. Now, what does double-minded mean? Well, if we look at the book of James, he talks a lot, a lot there, quite a bit there, about the double-minded person. And what James breaks down for us is basically that the double-minded person is an unstable person. It is someone who vacillates and is easily turned and shifted from one path to the next, right? It is a person who lacks commitment to the Lord to actually follow him to the end because they're half in and half out. And the image that James gives us there of this double-minded person is a person who's been tossed around by waves, is, is unstable, right? A person who has two voices in him, full of doubt regarding whether or not he, God is trustworthy. Or on the other hand, the psalmist says, far f being from that, he hates the double-minded, but he loves God's word. So in verse 14, he shows us what the opposite of double-mindedness is like. That the psalmist takes refuge in God. You see, God becomes our hiding place and our shield, right? That in which we trust to protect us from whatever it is that we think threatened us. We're putting our hope in His Word, as stated in His verse. And this, again, comes back to trust. Like, we won't hide ourselves in a place that we don't trust will actually um, deliver us from danger, or we won't shield ourselves with something that won't actually protect us or we won't hope in something that we don't actually trust in. So David's saying, I hate those who don't actually trust God, but as for me, I will trust in the Lord. And in verse 15 then, David tells us how we can prevent ourselves from being double-minded. And here he highlights something very interesting. Right? He highlights the importance of the community that we're in. The psalmist asks the evildoers, to depart from him so that he can keep God's word. See, he's aware, the psalmist is, of the influence of his environment on him. He knows that what evildoers does is that they prevent us who are trying to actually follow God from keeping God's word. And they do this in a number of ways, right? And like, for example, presenting their evil and ungodly ways as legitimate alternatives to following God, or by actively making our circumstances and our surroundings not friendly um, to our endeavors to follow God, right? Putting us in positions or cir circumstances where it seems like the appropriate thing to do is to sin. Evildoers lead our heart by example in a temptation, and if we follow them, ultimately into destruction. This is part of the snares that they lay for us. You see, and the psalmist doesn't want this. Rather, in verse 116, it shows us what the psalmist wants is that 
he wants God to vindicate his promises to him and give him life as he has promised. The psalmist doesn't want to be put to shame, right? Because the evildoers are showing him ways that is making him doubt his own ways. And these evildoers, as Paul says in 1 Corinthians, are also the same evildoers who would consider the gospel of Jesus Christ, the cross of Christ, foolishness. Paul says that the gospel is foolishness to those who are perishing, but those who are being saved, it is the very wisdom and power of God. You see, in our moments of doubt and peril, when we are deep in our sins, God, God's word does seem or could seem impractical, idealistic, and even perhaps foolish at times, even for someone who does have faith. But it is exactly in these moments like the psalmist is experiencing, where he is threatened by these evildoers, who he feels like he's laying snares around him, that it is appropriate to ask God to show us his power. And look at in verse 17 what the psalmist asked for. He asked God to give him consistency in looking towards God's word, because he is aware that it is in God alone can he really find safety in his time of need. But there's an interesting turn here in verse 118. Whereas the, previously, the psalmist talks about what he wants to avoid is uh, the snares and the plans of his enemies. But in verse 118 to verse 120, we see now that what the psalmist is actually uh, considering as the biggest danger is God's judgment. Look at verse 118. Right? That those who stray from God's word, those evildoers, the double-minded, who are at best half-heartedly following God, they will be spurned. What this word spurned means in Hebrew is literally um, to be made worthless, to be frustrated. Their cunning, right? Their, their schemes and lies that they tell themselves and others will ultimately be in vain. God will frustrate all of them and he will have the final victory. And this is said in verse 119 in very strong terms, right? That the wicked will be discarded like dross. Like garbage, they'll be thrown away. And the psalmist discerns their end, and it is judgment. Therefore, so as not to be discarded like garbage, the psalmist commits himself to loving God's testimonies. And this, friends, is the basis of what verse 120 says, that his flesh trembles in fear of the Lord. He is afraid of God's judgment. And the Bible does, if you've been reading our Bible, talk a lot about the fear of the Lord. And how is the beginning of wisdom? And we can see, therefore, that a healthy fear of God is necessary for a flourishing Christian life and uh, to, to prevent ourselves from dull mindedness. You see, because a healthy fear of the Lord helps us to see things for the way they are. And part of that is being able to recognize and see the authority and position of God as king and judge over all creation. That he has indeed promised to righteously and justly punish sin. That God won't let just sin slide, but God will enact justice on the earth. You see, so David here is not reluctantly following God because he's scared of him. David loves God's word and he's aware of God's life-giving power, but at the same time, David has enough reverence and respect for the excellence and supremacy of God to know not to mess with him. So we're not living in fear of God, right? Or obeying God under some kind of duress. But there is a willful submission to the Lord here by the psalmist. So friends, if we're experiencing seasons of doubt and we feel like we have been a bit double-minded lately and we're struggling to keep God's word. Let us pray for courage like David. Remove ourselves from our community or influences that might put us in a position to do evil or to be tempted to do evil and ask God to vindicate his word for us, to show us the truth of his promises and give us life. While at the same time, humbling ourselves in obedience by submitting to him because we fear him. Not, not, that we're, not because we're terrified of him, but because we know who he is and we know that he deserves all our obedience and it is in his path can we find life. Amen. Let's pray.
Father in heaven, uh, we are such turbulent creatures, Lord, so easily tossed around by our circumstances and our sinful passions, Lord, uh, feeble in every way, but you, Lord, are our rock and our fortress, our strong tower. In you alone, Father, can we find refuge. Help us see that, Lord. Remove from us um, these evildoers and influences that might lead us to believe otherwise and give us an enduring ability to commit to you and to only look to you as our hope. For in you alone can we find life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.